Good morning, students. We continue with our discussion on the vendors of sweets, a novel written by R. K. Narayan. In our last class, we have discussed about R. K. Narayan and the important characters from our novel. In our this class, we will discuss about the story of the vendor of sweets. So it is a story of Jagan and his son Mali. Jagan is a 55 year old sweet meat vendor at Malgudi. He is a successful businessman. His shop is running well. He is a follower of Mahatma Gandhi and he is honest, hard working and an humble resident of the uh, suburb Malgudi. In his youth, he was influenced deeply by Mahatma Gandhi and left his studies and his peaceful life to become an active member in India's struggle for freedom from the British Empire. He narrates his those adventures in the freedom struggle with enthusiasm. The Bhagavad Gita forms the staple of his life. He tries to follow every word of Bhagavad Gita in his life. He tries to act on the principles described in Bhagavad Gita. But we will find that he lives two lives. For he pays the due taxes on his income from the shop that is before 6 o'clock in evening. And after 6 o'clock, whatever he earns, he keeps it secret. So we can say that he is really a practical man. But it does not make him uh, a villain. He believes in naturopathy. So naturopathy forms the pivotal of his life. And he even desires to publish his natural ways of living in the form of a book. But it becomes obvious that it is a futile dream as the draft has been gathering dust in the office of the local printer Nagraj for the last five years. So he believes in naturopathy and he does not approve the use of allopathic medicines. Mali thinks, his son thinks that it is because of his this, uh, this obstinance that he did not allow the use of medicine uh, for his wife and this is the reason that his wife died. Jagan wears hand spun cloth khadi and signifies purity to him and he has been commended for it by Gandhi himself. So he says in his early days Jagan's wife Ambika dies from a brain tumor and leaves him to care for his only son Mali. In spite of the uh, that brain tumor, Ambika was not allowed to take medicines by Jagan and when he allowed it, it was too late. So now, there is only this father and his son. Mali, uh, the story of Ambika is in flashback. Mali is gradually spoiled by Jagan and is almost maternal obsession towards his son's life. Later in his college days, Mali displays his deep dislike for education and says that he would like to be a writer, which Jagan at first interprets as a clerical occupation. Afterwards, Mali decides to leave to America to study creative writing because he wants to be a writer. He gets his passport and tickets ready without even informing Jagan about his plans. In fact, Jagan used to conceal some part of his earnings to avoid the taxes and Mali takes that money from his father's hidden treasure to fulfill his expenditures. Eventually, Jagan comes to know about that thing but he accepts this diversion with good heart and treasures every letter received from Mali and proudly exhibits it to everyone whom he met in his daily activities. So Mali has left for America and from there he sends letters regularly to his father. 
and Jagan reads out those letters to the gatherings at his shop. A few years passes and a few years later Mali returns to Malgudi very westernized and bringing along a half American half Korean girl Grace. Jagan assumes that they are married according to the social norms and standards but also realizes that Mali's relationship with him has further eroded. Mali is not that much interested in him. However, Jagan develops an affection for Grace and feels that Mali is not giving her the attention she deserves. Soon, Mali expresses his grandiose scheme of starting a machine factory with the association of some anonymous business partners from America. He asks his father to invest in this factory, but Jagan is unwilling to provide the financial infrastructure of this venture, which causes more friction between the father and the son. So, Jagan is asked by Mali to give financial support for the setting of the company, but Jagan does not accept that proposal. Troubled by this turmoil, Jagan decides to retire from active working. Through an unexpected meeting with the top businessman of the region, Jagan comes across the bearded man, another character in the novel, but he has only a very uh, little role to play, a rather eccentric hair dyer whose eloquence makes Jagan contemplate on his dull and monotonous life. He starts to develop a desire to have re renunciation from his life. He is fed up with life, bored with that monotonous lifestyle and suddenly falls into a recollection of his happy past with his family and his wife which further strengthens his need for reconciliation. He remembers his early days, his marriage the birth of Mali, how difficult it was. They had to pray to goddess. He starts to develop a desire to have renunciation from his life and suddenly falls into a recollection of his happy past with his family and his wife. As this happens, unfortunately Mali is caught by the police for driving under the influence of alcohol and deserts his wife. Actually, she is not his wife. Jagan then asks his cousin to make sure that Mali stays in prison for some time so that he can learn his mistakes. Jagan also writes a check to the cousin so that he can buy a plane ticket for Grace so she can go back to her motherland if she wants. So this is the story that when we can say that Jagan makes an adjustment with all the whims of Mali right from his childhood. But when he comes to know that Mali and Grace are not married, in spite of this, they are living in the same room in his house. So that is a shock, a great shock for Jagan. And he decides to renunciate from his life. Uh, when he comes to know about the arrest of Mali, he feels that now it will be difficult for Grace to live here. Perhaps she would, she would like to return, return back to America. So she gives this check to cousin and here the story ends. This story has all the qualities, all the we can say trademark qualities of R.K. Narayan. It is set in Malgudi, a very effective use of past memories, description of childhood, then the spring of humor here and there in the character of Kajin and Jagan himself. The family conditions, 
the tension in family especially between the old generation and the new generation and we can say between the culture of india and culture of america if we take these things point by point to describe arcanine's writing technique writing style we can say that his writing technique is unpretentious with a natural element of humor about it humor is everywhere in his work it focused on ordinary people reminding the reader of next door neighbors cousins and the like thereby providing a great ability to relate to the topic the setting and the surrounding of the story the atmosphere in the story the characters in the story they are they appear to be familiar to us we feel that these are the characters with which we come across even in our own life in his books there is at least one character with whom we identify some of our own experiences unlike his national contemporaries he was able to write about the intricacies of indian society without having to modify his characteristic simplicity to conform to trends and fashions in fiction writing he applies new techniques and successfully he is successful even with those new techniques to give the taste of the old system of indian society that he achieved especially with the help of his diction the words he has used they are so apt that the depict the true picture of indian society he also employed the use of non dialogue uh, non dialogic prose with gentle tamil overtones based on the nature of his characters but that we will not find much in this our this novel critics have considered narayan to be the indian chekhov due to the similarities in their writings the simplicity and the gentle beauty and humor in tragic situations graham green considered narayan to be more familiar more similar to chekhov than any indian writer anthony west of the new yorker considered narayan's writing to be the realism variety of nikolai gogol according to jumpa lehri his short stories have the same captivating feelings as his novels with most of them less than 10 pages long and talking about as many minutes to read and sorry and taking about as many minutes to read she says that between the title sentence and the end he provides the reader something novelists struggle to achieve in 100 more pages a complete insight to the lives of his characters she is discussing about his short stories but that is true even to his novels he has a complete insight and understanding of his characters that's why his every character is so effective so life like those characteristics and abilities led lahiri to classify him as belonging to the pantheon of short story geniuses that include o henry o'connor and flannery o'connor also she also compares him to mopasa for their ability to compress the narrative without losing the story and the common theme of middle class life written with an unyielding and unpitying vision we as naipaul noted that he wrote from deep within his community and did not in his treatment of characters put his people on display it is also noted that his writings tend to be more descriptive and less analytical he describes the scene very effectively and vividly the analysis of mind or psychology is not so much in his novels but it is not that he ignores the psychological aspect of characters but that thing is described or is hinted at through their activities or through their action and through their dialogues the objective style rooted in a detached spirit providing for a more authentic and realistic narration his attitude coupled with his 
perception of life provided a unique ability to fuse characters and actions and an ability to use ordinary events to create a connection in the mind of the reader we are never bored or out of tone out of tune while reading his books a significant contributor to his writing style was his creation of malgudi that is that small town where the standard norms of superstitions and traditions apply his writing style was often compared to that of william faulkner since both their works brought out the humor and energy of ordinary life while displaying compassionate humanism humanism is never absent from his work the similarities also extended to their juxtaposing of the demands of society against the confusion of individuality although their approach to subjects was similar their methods were different faulkner uh, faulkner was rhetorical and illustrated his points with immense prose while narayan was very simple and realistic capturing the elements all the same we are not to use the these suggestions as they are we should try to make our own points with the help of these descriptions i have taken this matter from wikipedia so i advise you to change the matter and adjust it according to your own style read the novel and you will find that it is a very simple and sweet story of father and son and for today so thank you student see you in our next class